Hello and welcome to part 3b of the Project Cars Tuning Guide. In this video I will cover the advanced damper tuning options. This has been brought forward due to the requests in the comments. These are bump, rebound and bump stop. All three of these parameters can be adjusted individually at each corner of the car. Unless you are oval racing, I would advise that you keep left and right the same. Front to back on the other hand is a different matter. Nine times out of ten they will be different. Let's start simple. Bump stop. What is a bump stop? A bump stop is a small rubber ball or cone that is attached to the top mounting plate of your spring. The goal of the bump stop is to prevent the spring from colliding with itself when it is compressed. If the spring collides with itself, you will get some very unpredictable handling, as any shocks cannot be absorbed. The bump stop increases the force required to fully compress the spring. Bump stops can be non-linear or they can be linear. In project cars, the bump stops are linear, so this helps things. Instead of the car behaviour gradually changing as the spring is compressed, the car will be normal and then suddenly very different. So when you notice the handling suddenly become very different, you know you've encountered bump stop. What is this different handling? Well, imagine the spring rate has just doubled and the car is suddenly very stiff. If encountered on the front, you'll get understeer. If encountered on the rear, you'll get oversteer. If you have a soft spring and want to keep it soft, then you want a high bump stop. This is to stop the spring from compressing too much and reaching the stage where it collides with itself. If you have a firm spring and want to keep it that way, then you want a low bump stop. The high spring rate should stop you from ever fully compressing the spring. But for those occasions where there is a sudden suspension load, the bump stop will be useful. Remember, you should never really encounter bump stop. If you do, I'd strongly suggest increasing your ride height or increasing your spring stiffness. The bump stop is there as a safety device to stop you from losing control by preventing the spring from fully compressing. It shouldn't really be used for anything but preventing that from occurring. Right, dampers. These can be broken down into slow and fast and bump and rebound. Let's describe bump and rebound first. Occasionally, bump is called bound, but I'll be calling it bump. Bump is when the damper is compressed. Rebound is when the damper extends. You want different behaviour for both of these. Now, fast and slow. Slow is when you are cornering and the weight shifts gradually. So the springs and dampers gradually got compressed and extended. Fast is when you go over bumps in the road and the suspension has to react quickly. You want different damper behaviour in both of those circumstances. What does a damper do I hear you ask? It ultimately resists the suspension displacement. So in bump, the damper will reduce the amount that the suspension is compressed. In rebound, the damper will reduce the amount that the suspension extends. The stiffer the damper, the more resistance it has. The more resistant it is, the quicker the suspension will reach steady state and the less weight transfer there will be. Steady state, what's that? Well, when the suspension compresses, it is not a linear compression, it oscillates. These oscillations are bad for handling. If you have a wheel, turn it to full lock. If you have a controller, pull a stick in one direction. This, we can use this 
to demonstrate oscillations. Now, when you let go, the wheel will self-center and the controller stick will also self-center. Imagine that was a spring, it wouldn't self-center. It would go past the neutral position and go the other way and then start coming back and going backwards and forwards. That's an oscillation. The damper aims to reduce this. So, now we've got that out of the way, let's focus on cornering first. So these are slow bump and rebound. The suspension will compress, so bump on the outside, as this is where the weight transfers to. The inside of the car will begin to rise, so the suspension on the inside will rebound. So, slow bump will resist the weight transfer gain on the outside wheels, making the car more predictable. Slow rebound will resist the weight transfer by stopping the suspension from extending, so in effect holding the weight back. This is why slow bump and rebound are much stiffer than fast as they are preventing weight transfer. The stiffer they are, the more it slows down the weight transfer through the corner. So the more predictable the car will be as it will slow down any sort of understeer to oversteer transition. You don't want it too stiff though Otherwise, it will be like driving a car with no suspension, and the car will be very difficult to drive. The stiffer the front is, the more understeer you will feel. The stiffer the rear is, the more oversteer you will feel. Right, on to fast bump and rebound. This is when you are going over curbs or have a very bumpy track. Tracks like Monaco are more sensitive to fast damper settings than Silverstone. Now, the fast settings are softer than the slow, as here you want the suspension to react quickly to bumps in the road. If the suspension acts slowly, the tyres will be at risk of not being in contact with the road. Obviously, if the tyres aren't in contact, you don't have a lot of grip. Fast bump is how quickly the suspension can deflect after going over a bump. Too stiff and the tyres are at risk of jumping over the bumps. Too soft and the car is at risk of bottoming out or the spring compressing too much. Fast rebound is how quickly the suspension extends to come into contact with the road surface. Too soft and the car can bounce. Too stiff and the suspension doesn't extend fast enough and the car could bottom out. Now, with slow and fast settings, it is up to you to find the right balance. There is no golden ratio here. Generally, the front is softer than the rear. Generally, the rebound is stiffer than the bump. There is not normally a huge difference between these values, but the rebound to bump difference is normally larger than the front to rear difference. Dampers are a good way to fine tune the handling without major changes to other parameters. That is it for part 3B of the Project Cars Tuning Guide. Make some notes, watch the video again, and go on track and try adjusting the settings. You will feel what is right for you. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you found it useful and remember to subscribe. If you have any feedback about the video, then please leave a comment down below.